Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're reviewing a gaming keyboard because I'm sort of a gamer now. It just happened. This is the Logitech G915 TKL Lightspeed Wireless Low Profile Gaming Keyboard. And it costs a ton of money. We actually saw it at Best Buy on sale at around $180. The original price is $220. So we copped it and was like, let's, let's take a look. I've been eyeing it for some time now because of the wireless latency speeds that it advertises and i have played a few games with it and i gotta say it's really impressive i played games with bluetooth before and that latency is super duper noticeable but on this the light speed it's really nice anyways the audio is going to be a little bit different because i'm using a recorder now instead of plugging straight into my camera i hope it sounds good for you guys but we we did buy new audio equipment it just hasn't come in yet this lav mic i'm using is like 30 bucks and the new setup's gonna be like 300 so hopefully that'll be better than what it is now and indy is stealing the show once again anyways let's jump into the review Today we're reviewing the Logitech G915 TKL. So we're gonna start with what's in the box. In the box, you get the board itself, of course. In the back of the board, you get the light speed dongle that you can pull out. There's a convenience little port here that just carries it. So you don't have to worry about losing your little dongle, but this can either connect to your computer or you can use the included braided cable to the included micro USB to USB adapter to connect to a cable so that the receiver can be closer to your keyboard. I don't know, that's how they tell you to connect it in their little manual sheets. And I followed that and I was like, why is this thing sitting on my desk? So now I just plug this thing straight into my computer and I don't have to worry about all these wires on my desk. It comes with a micro USB cable. It's black, it's braided, it has no kinks. I really like it. And of course there is a Logitech sticker that comes with everything Logitech. There's also warranty information, safety information, and compliance information, but no one really reads this stuff, so we'll throw that off to the side. And they also have this little advertisement of all the other Logitech things you can buy if you have the money to buy it. So that's what's in the box. Now we're going to go on to build quality. So the board appears to be very impressive. The top is made of this brushed black aluminum plate. And initially when I saw this keyboard come out a long time ago, I thought the whole frame was aluminum. But in reality, it's actually a really, really tiny layer of aluminum on top. And then the rest of the bottom is entirely made of plastic. So I feel a little bit cheated there. For the amount of money that thing, this thing costs, I expected full aluminum but with full aluminum, it would probably interfere with a lot of the wireless capabilities. So I understand. We'll look at the back first. So in the back, we have six rubber feet, three at the top, three in the bottom. We also have two dual angle adjustable kickstands. One is four degrees, the other is eight degrees. And the good thing about these is that when you have your feet up and your pushing on the keyboard back, these feet are gonna stay put and not snap back into themselves, which happens to other keyboards quite often, especially if you're uh, button mashing or panicking. From all the games I've been playing recently, I've learned that uh, in really intense situations, I start to panic real quick. And then of course there's this US 
USB dongle holder storage right there. I really like that a lot. On the right side, you'll see this black uh, embossed letters that says G915TKL, very clean looking. On the left side, there's nothing. And then on the back top here, on the left side is the micro USB port and it's pretty much flush with the board. On the right side here, you have the on off switch. Off is red, on is blue. And then the front of the board is quite clean. We have a larger forehead than we see on most TKL boards and that's for good reason. We got the Logitech G at the top left. This does glow RGB as well. Then we have the Lightspeed connector button. So if you are connecting in Bluetooth and you wanna to connect to Lightspeed, you're gonna hold that until it connects. It has the Bluetooth connecting button. It has the game mode, easy access, and then it has the brightness button. And you can use that along with eight and nine to access the two other RGB patterns that you store into your board too. On the right side here, we have the dedicated media keys. We have previous track, pause play, next track, and mute quick access for mute and then we have the infinite edge edgeless scroll wheel for volume here and i dig this a lot it is so quiet barely makes any noise when you scroll at all it does scroll volume up and down very quickly and very easily in the middle on the top you have the light speed connector thing here and then you have these two indicators one is for battery and then caps lock glows in white when that's on. The buttons themselves are pretty mushy. They're not satisfying to press at all and they're extremely quiet to press as well. Everything about this entire top is really quiet and then we go on to the keyboard which is less than quiet but we're gonna start with the keycaps. So the keycaps are flat. They are made of double shot ABS plastic and they are not your average everyday keycaps. They are connected to these KL low profile chalk switches, although they are rebranded as the Logitech GL switches. I got the tactile version here. So in the sound test at the end, you're gonna be able to hear all those extra sounds of the tactile bump and whatnot, all of that. It is a standard TKL layout. We have your arrow keys, your nav cluster, your standard bottom row. We have pretty much everything is normal but it's not going to be easy to replace these keycaps if you break them because they're very special keycaps instead of a cross shaped stem at the bottom instead you have this two prong kind of stem and i've seen these be pretty easily broken and they feel pretty flimsy they'll click back into the switch but they are very thin the good side to this is that your RGB lights are gonna shine pretty nicely with the Double Shot Legends. Another benefit to this board compared to a board like the K1 V4 is that these switches or the keycaps here appear pretty close together. It's not like the MacBook kind of appearance at all where there's a significant gap between each key. These feel like they're close, like they're easy to reach and things like that. There is a floating keycap style design and you can see the tiny switch underneath each keycap. So definitely be careful when you take these keycaps off because they can break and they are flimsy and they're not easily replaceable even by Logitech. It doesn't come with a keycap puller, but if you're gonna pull these keycaps off, I highly recommend you get yourself a wire keycap puller and don't just force them out, do a little kind of slow wiggle and get them out instead. Just be on the safe side on this one. The legends are extremely clean. There are no separations at all. And they shine RGB light really brightly. You have some side printed legends for the different profiles of the board M1, through M3 and you also have an MR on. You also have sub legends on the number row for your symbols. And of course, things like apostrophe and greater than, less than, question mark, things like that. Those don't have RGB on them, but chances are you probably already know where those are. All right, so onto the switches. These are Logitech GL switches. Although if you take the keycaps off, you're gonna notice that it says Kale on its housing and they look a lot like Kale low profile chalk switches with the two prong stems. So Kale also has low profile switches nowadays. 
that are the cross shaped stems that you can pretty much put other keycaps on. So I'm a little disappointed that these are using the old stem instead of the new stem. The new stem would make keycap replacement a lot easier and not be as flimsy. So the black colorway, which looks like this, there's also a white colorway that looks pretty clean too. The black one comes with either tactile, clicky, or linear switches. And the white one only comes with tactile switches currently. They all cost the same, so it's up to you to decide what you want. They're not hot swappable, they're soldered in there. So make sure you get something that you're gonna be happy with. They all have the same stats pretty much, but the browns have a bump, the reds are smooth, and the uh, clicky ones are gonna produce a click. They all actuate at 1.5 millimeters and their total distance is 2.7 millimeters. On the tactiles, the actuation force is 50 grams, but to get through that bump is 60 grams. So it's relatively lightweight. It's not a lot of distance at all. Initially, when we bought this board, I really thought adjusting to it would be difficult because I've had experience with low profile boards and they've always been pretty difficult to adjust to, but this was an easy switch. I don't use it flat because it's super flat. I actually use it on the highest angle, which is really rare for me to even use kick up feet at all. But I use it on the highest angle, no wrist rest obviously, and that way it feels a lot more natural for me to use. I can use it flat, but then I'll have to hover a little bit more, which sort of feels strange. And I mostly use this when gaming, so of course I'm going to be resting my wrist on my desk. Surprisingly, with the tactile switches, hitting the edges of the keycaps don't make them stuck or anything. It's still going to push through and actuate the buttons, so my typos have been pretty low and that's actually impressive so i've only been using it for a little bit one huge downside about this board is the abs plastic despite its price these keycaps aren't gonna last you a ton of time i mean they'll last they just won't feel or look amazing they're gonna look oily and sort of dirty all right stabilizers they are they look like cherry style stabilizers, they're cross-shaped stem, there's a wire. They get the job done. They're not amazing. They're not pre-lubed. They still make a bunch of noise. Of course, the typing test is gonna be at the end so you can hear all of that, but here's a quick preview of the stabilizers. And this is a normal switch. So the stabilizers have some additional rattle, but for a low profile board, I would say it's probably the best stabilizers that I've used on a low profile board. So I'm not gonna complain that much for this one. There are some additional features as well, as well as software that we need to get into to get your maximum potential out of this board. Your software is gonna be able to pretty much edit everything except it can't remap any of the keys. It can remap the function row and that's about it. You have three different profiles to work with that you can change the function rows to be whatever you want. It could be a system command, open something, uh, copy paste, macros, remap, whatever. But your keys, your other keys are stuck where they're at and you can't really do much to change that. So the keyboard does go to sleep and you can change that in the software and you can edit it to never do that or do it every one minute or 15 minutes depending on what you want. Another really cool feature is the Lightspeed Wireless. It really does have minimal latency. It games very well. I can barely notice anything at all. So it's got a pretty large battery. They say that you can get up to 40 hours with max brightness. And with the software open, it'll tell you what percentage of battery it's at and it'll tell you whether it's charging or not too. And you can play and charge the board at the same time, which is another convenience. There are two additional RGB profiles that you can program and the three different function rows profiles that you can program too. So not a ton of customizability. You can't change what the wheel does, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so the software is Logitech G Hub. It lets you do all those things I just mentioned. It also lets you change what happens when you press the game mode button. By default, it's going to inactivate or deactivate the Windows menu and function key, but you can program it to turn off more buttons if you want. Also, you can create your own custom freestyle effects 
or your own animations on the board and then download that into your keyboard and you can access that by pressing the brightness button and either eight or nine. So it can only store two custom profiles. And what's my verdict for this board? I know I've never been a fan of low profile boards, but if you want to game wirelessly, like light speed is the way to go. I've never seen something like more amazing or more delivering on what they promise. This is a good gaming keyboard. It's responsive. I don't notice any latency when I play. Although I'm not a pro player anywhere close, it's way, way faster than connection, connecting through Bluetooth. There are some things that I would like to improve though, such as the micro USB port. It sort of sucks that I can't just like connect it to the USB-C port that I have on my PC that is there all the time and I connect it to various things. Another thing I would change are the ABS keycaps. I would just change that to PBT and um, yeah, let that be done with. I would also upgrade to the new KL low profile chalk switches with the cross shaped stem instead of using the old one where the keycaps with those two prong things are sort of flimsy. But other than that, the board is really amazing. Although I usually dislike low profile, I really like this one. And it's, it's a good thing that we got it on sale at $180 instead of the original 220, which is a really hefty price for a mechanical keyboard. But if you think about it, it's one of the few keyboards out there that's gonna offer that light speed wireless gaming technology. So it's not like you have a bunch of options out there in the first place. So the links are down below, but for the best wireless keyboard of 2020, this is hands down one of the best wireless keyboards I've ever used. And I'm gonna leave you guys at that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna keep gaming on this board. It's not my daily driver, but for gaming, it sure is nice to just be able to plug in a dongle and start gaming away wirelessly. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.